Hey, Shalom, Mark, and Zerukah, Mark, Pasha, and Jim, and Salaam, and giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechach, Kodash. I want to give double honors unto the elders, the apostles of GMS, and Shalom, out there to the hopeful that's pushing his truth in all sincerity. Uh, back again with another video, and this is it's inspired from um, this video clip here, Brother Wild put up in the chat. You know, this one we've seen before, but it's great, right? Because, you know, not, you're not going to see many, uh, you know, movies or clips, man, that show show you the scriptures for what it is you know being more true to what the scriptures say you know lord being dark skinned and you know the israelites and you know and so on and so forth right and uh you know it's, it's a nice little clip man it's a you know it's good for the spirit <laughs> i had to see this clip right so um you know i just wanted to do a video based off this man i'm going to title this the lord said what he said right this 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 Truth is this Bible isn't for nobody else, man. This is this is for our people. All right, this is for our salvation. Okay, these these other nations, man, have got nothing to do with it. Never have done. Okay, and the Lord said what He said. Okay, you watch this clip. I, you know, I'm not gonna play it because I don't know, if, you know, if YouTube were trying to flag it or whatever, man. But watch this clip, man. You know, you can see you can see people, you know, in the comments, man. You see, his lights and just getting charged up, man. Getting, you know, emotional and that because hey, we've been waiting for this for a long time, man. You know, our deliverance from the hand of our enemies, and this is what the scriptures is is about for us, man. Our deliverance. This is a story about our people, okay, and the things that we you know we've we, we've been through and and, and things that are going to come to us, man. You know, this story is about the Israelites, about God's children. This is what the book's about, God's children. Okay, and it ain't everybody God's children, man. You, you, you know, you read the scriptures and the Lord Lord has a chosen people. Okay, he chooses people. That in itself, the fact that he chooses is a sign of inequality. The Lord don't deal with equality. Every, everybody's not on the same level. Okay, the fact that he even chooses, man. It's not a choice if this Lord, you know, is just open to anybody. It's not a choice then. The Lord has selected, picked out certain men, certain tribes, certain, you know, families. To be chosen, to be special, for the Lord to bestow their, His blessing upon them, a, a particular blessing, not just any blessing, because all, 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 everyone gets watered and fed on this earth, right? And it's all to do with the Heavenly Father. They all get watered and fed, the <laughs> majority of them, right? We're not talking about general, general maintenance of the earth. We're not talking about general maintenance, right? The Lord has a specific blessing upon the house of Israel, okay, to be rulers. Over the nations man To be judges and kings upon the earth To be gods on the earth To be blessed beyond measure That is something that belongs to us Okay it doesn't belong to the other nations man And again the Lord said what he said man Okay and ain't no one going to take away from what the Lord said Okay not nobody Alright So we're just going to go through some scriptures You know just to reaffirm that. Right? So I'm going to start here in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6. This is, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. Israel is a holy people. Holy means set apart, separated. All right? We're not like everybody else. The Lord has separated us. And what makes us separate or what makes us special and different is the Lord's statute commandments that He had given to us, man, and the covenant that He made with us by blood. Right, that sets us apart from the rest of the nations. The Lord never sat down, you know, with no other nations and did that with them. Okay, they're not the same as us. All right. It says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, Yahweh. The Lord thy power have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. He's picked him picked us for himself. He didn't pick anybody else. Right? Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay, the Lord said it. Right, all this equality bullshit, any, everybody's... No. The Lord chose Israel to be, as a nation, we're not talking about individuals, oh yeah, this one's a good one, so he's, he, he should be set above. No, all Israelites, no matter what, how they come in, how they come in, man, is above any nation upon the face of the earth. Okay? Any Israelite, to the, low, from the, from the, to the greatest to the smallest, man. Right? They're all above you. All above the nations. 
right? Because that is what we're made to be as a family, as a tribe, as a nation. All right? Inherently, that's what's been given to us, right? It says, God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Okay, the Lord said it. Okay, it's not something that we're making up. You know, I know you, you, know, all you people have been westernized and, you know, all your emotions and stuff. And, oh, you know, well, we should be seeking equality and, you know, all this superiorism and all this bullshit is, 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 is you know, least the hate. Fuck all of that. Okay, we're not dealing with how you feel about it, what you think about it. You know, we're dealing with what the Lord said and what the Lord has decided to set up, man. And all that shit about hate and, you know, we should people, you know, people should be treated equally. And all that. That's, that's dang good in the kingdom. We ain't even worried about all that, man. They're going to be acting right, man, because they're going to get the, the bus up. Right? We're going to have the power to bust them up. Right? But that's righteous because they're going against the will of the Heavenly Father. It's as simple as that. If you want to go against the will of the Heavenly Father, you can get bus up too, man. And, you know, you people that are against this word, man, you're going to get bus up. Okay, when the Lord brings the judgment, you're going to get bus up, man. Okay, and then you have to be re-educated in the spirit realm. <laughs> all right? Until you come back down and you're ready for service. Right, you're ready to be an Israelite, you know. But you're gonna get bust up, man. Anyone that's against this word is gonna get bust up. All right. But especially the heathens, right? Verse seven said, so "The Lord did not set His love upon you, because the Lord has said that He loves Jacob, He loves Israel." Right, and in the clip, you know, He told you that <laughs> He says it. Right, He said it. Right. So the Lord did not set His love upon you, nor choose you, because you are more in number than any people. For you were the fewest of all people. Because we were like the last, the last nation to be set up. You know, we were wandering in the wilderness. And everybody had, you know, they had their kingdoms, you know, being built and stuff, man. We were the youngest of all nations. Didn't have shit. You know, but the Lord gave us the land of Canaan. Okay, that was to be, be, be our home. Okay, which became the land of Israel. Okay, because the Lord gave it to us. The Lord promised us that. And the Lord said you've got to do away with the, the, with, the, with the inhabitants of Canaan, okay, which were the, the Canaanites, right? The Lord was going to do away with them. And for the most part, that was true, but, you know, we didn't fulfill, fulfill the will of the Heavenly Father. And, you know, so remnants were left and caused us issues over, over, the, over the times, man. You know, but that ain't going to be the case in the kingdom. They're going to be gone. Everybody in that region that is ours is going to be gone. Okay, there ain't going to be no, no pockets of no heathens running or ruling shit, right? They're going to be put down. Okay, we're going to have the, the whole of our inheritance, man, which we've never had before. We're going to have our whole inheritance. Okay, and everything's going to be, you know, put down before us, man. We're going to be at peace. Right? Because, you know, these 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 are uh, imposters and these Palestinians and, you know, all these these people in that out there, you know, in our land, man. They don't the land, the land not belong to them. All right? So they're going to be removed again. The inhabitants of our land in the land in our land are going to be removed again. Just like the Canaanites were removed. Okay, but this time it's gonna, you know, be wholly fulfilled. All right, it says um verse 8, but because the Lord loved you and because he will keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, right? Because like I said, the Lord picked, chose certain men, certain certain righteous men, right? To pass the blessing down to you know through their seed, okay, and and that promise was passed down unto Jacob and the twelve tribes, okay, and their seed, right? That's where it's passed down to, right? And it's a promise that has to be kept. It's a promise that the Most High had made, right? So like I said, He said it, man, and it can't be it can't be unsaid. It can't be undone. It can't be disannulled. I know you heathens, especially you guys like Volker, would love that to be true, but it cannot be done. The Lord is not going to go back on his word. The Lord is going to fulfill the promises that he made to our forefathers. Right? That's why the salvation is for us. It ain't for you. All right? So then because he will keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, have the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Right? And, and again, today, now we're in this modern day Egypt. And the Lord is going to do the same thing again. He's going to deliver us at the hand of of, of Esau, who is the Pharaoh right now, right? He's elites. And the Lord's going to deliver us out of the hand of Pharaoh and destroy the land of Egypt, okay? Be in America, right? The, the Lord's going to destroy the land of America when he delivers us, man. That's what the Lord's going to do. 
It says, Know therefore that the Lord thy power is, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy, he keepeth the covenants, he keepeth his promises, he keeps the side, you know, his side of the bargain. Right? Which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. And repayeth them that, that hate him to their face and destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hateth him. He will repay him to his face. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments, the statutes and the judgments which I commanded this day to do them. Wherefore it shall come to pass if he hearken to these judgments and keep and do them. That the Lord thy power will keep unto thee the covenant and mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine, thine oil and the uh, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. But right now we're not receiving those blessings, man, because we transgressed, right? We we we, we mess up our side of the bargain. But the most I still has to hold the, the, the promise that he made with Jacob. Right? So even though we're messing up and the Lord is jacking us up like he said he would do because we transgressed, that doesn't mean that now the, the promise that he made with Jacob is void. <laughs> he still has to keep that one. Right, so he has to make it some, make it some way, or make it somehow that we get, you know, get right, or we can be redeemed, right? And that is why Yahweh Shai came and did what he did. Right, he, he, you know, he gave himself as a sacrifice for his people. Pursuing to Luke chapter one verse sixty eight, which I'm going to get in a bit. That is why Yahweh Shai came, so so the Lord could fulfill his promise to Jacob. You know, so the Lord could keep his word. All right, this is um, verse 14. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. The Lord is going to bless us more than anybody else. Oh, that's not, that's not fair. That's not equal. Hey, 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 people not getting it yet. Right? The Lord doesn't deal with equal. The Lord, you know, uh, what does the scripture say, man? The Lord's basically said, love and mercy upon whom we we'll have mercy, right? So however he feels, to do to to a, a, a people is what he, it's, it's in his his prerogative, man. It's in his 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 own power to do. You think he cares about what you think, what you want? Ain't about you, man. It's about the will of the heavenly Father. It's what he want to do. So if he wants to bless someone more than in somebody else, he's he's in his right power, right mind, right power to do that, man. And no one could tell him no. There's not there's a scripture like that. Can't tell him no. Oh, you shouldn't do that, Lord. That's that's not being fair to others. You know, hey, hey, <laughs> hey, where the, where the, was it? Um, yeah, yeah Jacob gave uh, Joseph the the coat of many colors, man. Hey, his brother was vexed, man, but it was, it was that it was, it was Jacob, man. Jacob wanted to give that to Joseph. <laughs> you know, they were vexed, but you know, it is what it is at the end of the day. You know. But um, but yeah, the Lord is in His own prerogative to do what He want to do, man. And the fact that He don't see you heathens as equals or or even even relevant to Him, that is up to Him. You're just a, another creation that was created, and you know, unknown to you, unknowingly, your your purpose in life is to serve the nation of Israel, which you ain't doing. So, you know, the Lord don't care. Right? The Lord do what He want to do, right? But anyway. So thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Right? The Lord is going to bless us like tremendously. The Lord will take thee away, uh, take away from thee all sickness. Uh, you know, we, we, we're cursed with all these types of things now because we're not because we didn't keep it. You know, our bodies are failing, you know, illnesses and ailments. Right? It says the Lord will take away the away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee but will lay them upon all them that hate thee right for just for, 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 so Lord is saying man look man, if they just if, if they just look at you the wrong way think of you the wrong way because they're hating because you're prospering I'm going to jack them up I'm going to send plagues upon them just for that that looking down or whatever it is that these nations do that is not that's not um, acceptable the Lord's going to jack them up, man. They want to come a war against us. Take what we got. The Lord's going to jack them up. So what do you think the most I cares about the other nations, man? Most I don't care about the other nations. You're just here. You're just here, man. 
The Lord love Israel. The Lord do anything for Israel, man. The Lord will give nations for Israel. You you think you think you think you think it's, uh, the Lord feels bad that you know the Lord was doing away with, 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 with you know tribes of people when we came into the land of Israel. You think the, the Lord cared? It's doing away with tribes, so Israel could live in the land of Israel. You think <laughs> you know? You are expendable, man. You have a nation that's expendable, right? But you have a purpose, so you ain't all gonna go. Right, because there's got to be people on the, on the earth to, you know, for servants, man. You know what you understand. You're not understanding, <laughs> right? Anyway, so um, so that, verse sixteen, and thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee, right? Then I shall have no pity upon them. The Lord is saying that I have no pity upon them, because the Lord, like, you don't give a fuck. These men are wicked. <laughs> destroy them, man. Destroy. I don't care. Destroy them. They're wicked. They're not you. I don't have mercy upon you, man. The Lord destroyed us and jacked us up, man. But the Lord still got us around, you know? <laughs> but the Lord don't care about the heathen, right? Anyway. This is, um... Then I shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto thee. Okay, and this is a problem that we have as a people, man. We're all, all into idol worship. And if thou shalt say in thy heart, these nations are more than I, how can I dis how can I dispossess them? Because right now we're in a weakened state. We're 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 in slavery under Esau, right? Esau got all the all the all the power, all the bombs, all the guns, all the all the all the personnel, all the armies, right? The jets and the, the fucking you know uh ships and that stuff. We ain't got no power. We can't do nothing against Esau. Right? We we are truly weaker than him right now. Right, but we know that we have a greater power. We know we got a power that that can disannul anything that Esau can bring. Because we know these scriptures, we know what the law has done in the past. That's what gives us faith. That's what gives us hope. That's what makes us bold. We're not concerned about Esau and what Esau's got and what he can do. We're not. We're not. Uh, you know, we don't feel down about that. This this guy's gonna get his man. Right? It says, if thou shalt say in thy heart, these nations are more than, than I, how can I dispossess them? Thou, thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shall remember, well remember what the Lord thy power did unto Pharaoh and unto all Egypt. And that's what, we, that's what we're doing, man. We're remembering what the Lord did for us in the land of Egypt, to Pharaoh and, and you know, people of Egypt, and what he did to the nations in, in the land of Canaan. Every time he brought deliverance, man, what he did for us, man. Because it wasn't of our own power. You know, it's not because Jake could do a thousand press ups, you know what I mean, and, and could swing a sword around. It wasn't about that. The Lord was with us, man. The Lord gave us the ability to defeat our enemies, man. All right, so we're not concerned about Esau and his guns. You know, they're nothing in, 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 in the face of the Mosai and his power, right? Verse 19. And great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs, and the wonders, and the mighty hand, and the stretched out arm, whereby the Lord thy power brought thee out. So shall the Lord thy power do unto all the people of whom thou art afraid. Right? So this is, even, even future captivities, man, this is the same thing, and the same thing is going to apply now. It says, moreover, the Lord thy power will send the hornet among them, uh, and killer hornets, <laughs> uh, until, they, to, until they that are left, and hide themselves from thee, be destroyed. Thou shalt not be affrighted of at them, for the Lord thy God is among you, and and a mighty God and a terrible. The Lord, this is what we're trying to put through to you, man. The Lord is terrible, man. The, the Lord isn't some some, you know, baby hugging love machine, man. Just loves everybody. It, 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 ain't, it ain't like that, man. The Lord is terrible, man. The Lord do a lot of destruction, man. The God of destruction, <laughs> right? Do a lot of destruction too, right? And the Lord thy power will put out those nations before thee little by little. Right? And this is where we see we see Esau's kingdom is going down, man. The Lord is putting plagues and pestilences on this place, man. Weakening them. Right? The Lord is doing it little by little, man. Until a day comes when, you know, the judgment coming from one hour and, you know, America gets wiped out. But, you know, everything's a work up to that point. You know, the day of the Lord is coming, Right? So thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee, right? 
it's the same way we went into the land of Canaan. We, you know, the Lord just, just didn't wipe them all out. We, you know, it took time. We you know, did it bit by bit, you know. The Lord was doing things and, and, and whatever, right? But the Lord thy power shall deliver them unto thee and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver their kings into thy hands. And the Lord's going to do it again. When Yahweh Shai returns, man, what does the scripture say? You have, you have many crowns upon his head, right? Because he's going to go around and take power from all the nations, man, that he, he's going to go and destroy. Same thing is going to occur again. Okay, but Yahweh Shai is going to be at the, at the helm, leading us into battle, man. Okay, destroying, bringing down these kingdoms with the, with the, with the angels. All right? It's going to be a spectacular sight, man. Okay, these nations are not, are not getting saved, man. They're getting destroyed and put in servitude, man. It says, But the Lord thy power shall deliver them unto thee and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. And he shall deliver the kings into thine hand and thou shalt destroy the, their name from under heaven. <laughs> there shall no man be able to stand before thee until thou have destroyed them. Nobody. Right, they're all getting put down. Right, the graven images of their gods shall ye burn with fire, and thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy power. These idols that exist today, man, they're not going to exist anymore. Okay, in, in the day to come. Right? They're going to be wiped out from the face of the earth. No remembrance of them. So neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be cursed, be, be a cursed thing like it, but thou shalt utterly detest it. And shall utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. All right. So, like I said, you know, you get, you know, this world. We're gonna change how this world is, man. This world is gonna go for a reset. All right. But like I said, the Lord said what He said, man. This, this, this deliverance and salvation is for Israel. It doesn't matter what we've done in the past. You know how bad we were. How Lord, you know how, how angry the Lord was with us, man. The Lord said He was gonna have mercy upon the house of Israel. Right, and bring us back. Okay, the Lord said what he said. And I don't, you know, you heathens, you can't just jump on the bandwagon. You can't. Okay, you're the you're the you're the you're part of our affliction, man. Okay, you're part of our problem. You are the enemies of us, you know, of Israel. So you're gonna get punished and judged. Just like the Egyptians. Just like all the all these people that had us in captivity, man, they all got judged. Remember all those that hate thee? Well, Cavs only fucking hates this man. <laughs> so he got to get judged. But anyway, this is from Deuteronomy chapter, Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 1. And it shall come to pass when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, right? So we was going to receive those curses because we weren't going to be right, as the story goes, right? We weren't right. Which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among the nations whether the Lord have God, the Lord thy power have driven thee. Right? Is which what we're doing right now in, the, in our last captivity. Okay? We're bringing these things into our minds. And shall, verse 2, And shalt return unto the Lord thy power, and shalt obey his voice according to all that I commanded this day, thou and thy children, with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That then the Lord thy power will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee, and will return and gather thee from all nations where the Lord God have scattered thee. And this is what we're talking about, the, the Israelite Gentiles, man, because we were scattered. Right? The Lord is going to gather us from these nations that we're in. So if any of any of thine be driven out uh, uh, are driven out unto the utmost parts of heaven, from thence will the Lord thy power gather thee, and from thence will he fetch thee. And the Lord thy power will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. The Lord was going to bring us back home. And thou shalt possess it, and he will do, do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Alright? And the Lord thy power will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed. Right? And you can say this goes into the new covenant, man. The Lord's going to give us the, the was it the heart of flesh, right? And the, and the Lord's going to be written in our minds, man. Okay, so we're going to be made perfect. All right, so Lord, thy, thy power will circumcise thine heart and the heart of thy seed to love the Lord, thy power with all thine heart and with all thy soul that thou mayest live. And we're going to live forever. We're going to be in the kingdom of Israel, the kingdom of heaven forever. And with Yahweh Shai. Okay, that new covenant is going to be made with us. Like it tells you, is it Hebrews 8 and 10, I believe, right? And the Lord thy power will put all these curses upon thine enemies. 
right? So you other nations, you and their curses put upon you, just like happened in Egypt. There's a there's a common theme throughout the scriptures, man. And all of a sudden, you know, these these Christians, wacky take Christians, they want to change the theme of the story. This is what the Lord's always done against the the, the, the enemies of Israel. And it's going to, like I said, going to happen again. And on them that hate thee, which persecuted thee, you nations persecute us, man. What do you think is going to happen to you? The whole nation is going to get fucked, <laughs> you know, effed up, man. The whole of Egypt got effed up. It wasn't every Egyptian that was, you know, putting hell on us. The baker, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But everybody in Egypt got messed up, man. They got jacked up by the Heavenly Father, man. The Lord didn't care. The Lord don't care about what you did and didn't do. You're getting jacked up, man. You're a part of the system. You're a part of these nations. You're getting jacked up. Put in chains. Right? So verse 8, And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord and do all these commandments which I command thee this day. And the Lord thy power will make thee plenteous in every work of thy hand and in the fruit of thy body and in the fruit of thy cattle and in the fruit of thy land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over thee for good as he rejoiced over thy fathers. Right, that's, that's the point I wanted, man. And this is Leviticus 20, 26, verse 40, man. This is like one of my, my favorite passages, man. You know, because, you know, it really makes you feel, you know, because, you know, we're fuck-ups, man. You know, we ain't perfect, you know, but I know, we know the Lord's mercy is great. And you can see the Lord's mercy, you know, really feel it in this verse, man. You know, so I'm going to read it here, some verse 40. It says, if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with, with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary to me, because we have, right? And that I also have walked contrary unto them, which the Lord has, right? The Lord has put us in, into captivity under the nations because we walked contrary. So the Lord walked contrary to us. He didn't do us, you know, he didn't bless us, man. He cursed us, put curses upon us, right? And I've brought them into the land of their enemies, right? If then their uncircumcised, uncircumcised hearts be humbled, because I said we're Gentiles now in, in these lands that we're in, 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 in the places we've, where we've been scattered, we've become uncircumcised. Okay, but now we've been circumcised again in, in heart, right? Be humbled, well, and physically too. Uh, be humbled, and, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, because we acknowledge our thoughts. We understand why we're in this captivity. We understand why we live in this hell, or things don't seem to go right. Because of us, it was our own, it was our own thought, right? Verse 42, Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham, will I remember, and I will remember the land. Right? The promise, you know, the land we've promised and supposed to inhabit, right? The land also shall be left of them, and shall enjoy her Sabbath, while she lieth desolate without them. Right now, our land is desolate. You've got a bunch of heathens running it, man, but Israel is not Israel how it used to be. You know? The man have got to import plants and all kinds of shit to make you look half decent. You know, but it's really, it's really desolate, man. Full of wickedness in there. Idols and, and flameology going on down there, right? He says, why she lay desolate without them? And they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity because, even because they have despised my judgments. Okay, we didn't want to live the way the Messiah taught us to live. Okay, we wanted to go, you know, with the other nations and learn their ways and worship their gods. And, and this is what's happened to us, man. Okay, nothing but sorrow, Right? And because their souls are bored my statutes. And yet, so even though we, we was going to do all of that fucked up and, 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 you know, doing all kind of wickedness, right? The Lord said, and yet for all of that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. So there's, there's plenty of people that would like to think that because of our transgressions that, you know, especially like guys like Bokeh, we teach replacement theology and, you know, that ilk, right? They would like to believe that the Lord, he ain't dealing with Israel no more. That anyone be can become a, so a quote unquote Israelite if they believe. That's not how it works, man. That's not what the Lord was, is saying here. The Lord, the Lord, never, the Lord never opened no doors to no heathen, but He left the door open for Israel to return. Actual Israelites to return, <laughs> you know. Verse forty-four, and yet for all of that, all the wickedness, right, that we've ever done in any lifetime, in all lifetimes, right. Yet for all of that, 
when they be in the land of their enemies, where we are right now, I will not cast them away, neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly. The Lord hasn't destroyed us as a people, right? And to break my covenant with them, the Lord won't break the covenant with us. The Lord will remember that covenant, right? So for I am the Lord their power, but I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their power. I am the Lord Yahweh. Right? So for all of that, man, the Lord is still going to have mercy upon his children. Even though we've been bastards, man, we've been bratty kids. Wicked ass kids, man. Okay, so that gives me great comfort knowing that the Lord, man, he ain't, he ain't giving up on us, man. And as long as we don't give up, okay, the Lord going to have our back, man. Lord, we we'll be part of the elect and the Lord will forgive us for all our iniquities, man. And deliver us out of this place. And destroy our enemies. Alright. Verse 46. These are the statutes and judgments and laws which the Lord made between him and the children of Israel in Mount Sinai by the hand of Moses. Alright. So yeah, that's like one of my favorite ones, man. Alright. So we're going to fast forward into the so-called New Testament with Luke 1 and 68. Right. The purpose of Yahweh Shai. Why he came. Why he was sent. To fulfill that promise. Right. Luke 1 and 68, Blessed be the Lord, power of Israel, for he have visited and redeemed his people. And he have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies. Because, because why? Because the Lord has put us in the hand of our, enemy, in, of our enemies. <laughs> right? And that's who the Lord is going to be taking us back from. This is what salvation is. To be delivered. You know, and there's more to it than that, but, you know, a big part of it is the fact that we're in the hand of our enemies, man, and we're all jacked up and destroyed as a people. The Lord is going to deliver us from the hand of our enemies, man, and re-establish us in the land of Israel. Okay, but this time is going to be better than ever before. The Lord is going to make us perfect creatures, man. Okay, and the Lord is going to bless us beyond measure. All right. This is, um. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. That's that promise again, right? And to remember his holy covenant. The oath. Here's another word for promise, right? Which he swear to our father Abraham. Right? It's good to say what? Because he could swear no, by, by no greater swore by himself. You, you think the Most High is going to break that, that oath? That, that promise? Hell no. He ain't going to do that. So that we... That he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. Right, and that is what we're going to do, man. In holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. Right, that is what we're going to do in the kingdom. It is for us to do that. Okay, it's not, it's not, it's not the heathen are not meant to be put in that position. Right, this is Revelation chapter 2 verse 25. said, but that which you have already hold fast till I come. Okay, then what we got already is this truth. This knowledge and the, and the understanding thereof, right? The hope, the faith. Right? Verse 26. And, and, and this, can, this can only be held hold, held by the, the, the elect. All the elect have these, these things, right? Verse 26. And he that overcometh of the elect, right? And keepeth my works unto the end. Because hey, many are called, few are chosen, right? The chosen are the elect, but... No, there are, there's been other Israelites that have been called into this thing, but they're just not the chosen. Right? So it's whoever overcomes, whoever can endure unto the end, man, that is you know what's going to show you to be of the elect. Right? So the he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Right? The Israelites will, will promise this power. He's not going to give the power to a, to a heathen to have power over, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Over to, to, to get in on the, on the promise that he made unto Israel. That doesn't make any sense. All these promises the Lord would make, and he, he's going against them when, when these nations are our enemies. Why would he give power to, to our enemies when he's the power of Israel? Come on, man. And he that overcometh and keepeth my words unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations of the nation of Israel, right? Give power over the nations, over the heathen. Because we, we've been made to be above all nations, to rule over them. Right? Verse 27. And he shall rule them. Right? That goes back to what we've been doing in chapter 7 verse 6. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. 
as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father, because the, the Yahweh Shai is the the primary inheritor of all of that, which he is sharing among his brethren, okay, who are Israelites. Okay, which is going to fulfill the promise that was made to them, to their forefathers. So we're going to rule over the nations, man. The Lord said it. It wasn't a mistake. Okay, the Lord didn't change his mind. We know the Lord changes not. Okay, it wasn't by accident he said it. This is what's going to come to pass, man. Right, it's Isaiah 14 verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy upon Jacob. Or on Jacob. Not the whole world. Read Leviticus 20 and 44. The Lord was that mercy. Regardless of all of our transgressions, right? For the Lord will, will have mercy. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. And set them in their own land. Going back to the land again. We're going to possess it again. And the strangers shall be joined with them and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, right? So we're going to be one whole house. Right? All these Israelite Gentiles that don't know and don't want to accept that they're Israelites, they, they're all going to come under, you know, come together. Because we're going to be united. The two houses, the, the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah, they're going to be united again. Right? Verse 2, And the people shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. He's talking about the, the other nations, the heathen. We're going to rule them with a rod of iron, right? We will sit above all people. Right, and we've been we've been um, uh, captives in, in the land of our enemies. So we're going to possess you in that instead. Right, we're going to change the roles. And is the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives whose captives they were, and shall and they shall rule over their oppressors. We're going to rule over our captives, man. Those that have been oppressing us. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from the hard bondage wherein thou was made to serve. Right? The Lord said it. And anything the Lord said, man, every word is a promise. It's a something that can't, can't be broken, man. The Lord is not going to break any of these words that have been written down. Not for you. you know, not, for you not, not for anybody. Not for you heathen. Nobody, man. Not for vocab. Lord ain't going to break none of these words that he, that he spoke. Right? So like I said, man, he said it. That's what's going to be done. All right? And we, we can't wait. Okay? You don't care. You don't care about your heroes, man. We don't care what happens to you, man. We know what's going to happen to you. You know, we're, we're all for it. You know, we're not concerned. But, you know, with that, I'm going to say Shalom, Lord, when this is edifying. And I'll catch you, brothers and sisters, on the next video, man. So till next time, I say Shalom.